Hello everyone. I'm going to wait a couple minutes until I see some folks hop on. Uh, while we're waiting, hanging out with my girl, Al. Get a little side shot there. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Marissa. I am the Program and Partnerships team leader out of the Southern region. So I work out of the Cincinnati office. Uh, looks like we've got 14 folks hopping on. Good to see you guys. Feel free to introduce yourself in the comments. Um, while I am a millennial, this is my very first uh, Facebook Live. So bear with me <laughs> through this process together. Oh, hey, Caitlin. Good to see you. Uh, so uh, I know a lot of my coworkers, hi Brooke, uh, have met Al before, but I'll try and give a little close up. Um, she is a little camera shy. I'm hoping she doesn't realize she's on camera uh, with the computer, but she might. So this is my girl, Al. Give a little close up here. She's the prettiest girl. Um, <laughs> good morning, Anna. Uh, so we'll just wait um, maybe two more minutes. I just want to try and get as many people on as possible. Hello. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Serena. Good to see you guys. So glad everyone's hopping on. Um, for those who are just joining us, again, my name is Marissa. I work uh, for Girl Scouts of Western Ohio uh, at um, uh, in the Cincinnati office in our program and partnerships department. And this is Al. Um, fun fact about why she's named Al, uh, I got her when I was 19 years old and knew absolutely nothing about iguanas and not that, you know, you have to name according to gender, but I did think she was a boy um, and later found out she's a girl. So uh, for a while we thought she was boy and we called her Al, but she's still Al. So uh, we've changed her name to Alba. Um, <laughs> so that's where her name is. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. It's 10.02. So super excited today. We're going to be hanging out with my girl working on our Junior Animal Habitats badge. Um, and so we actually are going to be completing two steps today. Uh, steps one and two. So uh, for step one, uh, there is going to be an opportunity to observe Al as she gets her uh, daily feeding. Uh, I'm really hoping she is not camera shy again and will eat for you all. Uh, I have kale and carrots and so uh, we'll try it starting out with that and then the second step of the badge is to learn about uh, her um, living environment. So obviously uh, she is a domesticated iguana. I do not have her living in a tropical tree uh, outside but I will share about how I've made this uh, livable for her in my little home in Northside. So um, feel free if you've got questions as I kind of chug along here, uh, type them up in the comment log and I will try to get to them. I do have some preset questions that I'm going to try to get to um, just to make sure I'm answering everyone's questions as we move forward. So um, this is her cage. Uh, I'm, I've got <laughs> my laptop on a ladder here so I'm going to try and like move it up and down so you all can see. Um, a fun fact uh, that you may not know about iguanas is that they actually live uh, in the wild um, and can live up to be 25 to 30 years old and grow uh, to be five to seven feet long. Uh, definitely not something I realized when I got my iguana uh, as a 19 year old. It's really fun. Um, <laughs> uh, what I always like to try to impress upon anyone is if you do want to get an exotic pet, um, do your research first, and she's getting a little antsy here. Um, hi, Beth. I am so glad you love Al. I love Al, too. I always try to make everyone uh, a reptile convert in, in my daily duty. Um, so, so, yes, they can grow up to be five to seven feet long, which makes having them as a pet at home really challenging uh, because it's hard to find an environment that will hold them. So, uh, fortunately, Al is not five to seven feet long. She is just shy of three feet long. Uh, 33 inches. So um, I'm sure, you know, she's an eight-year-old. Um, typically in domestic care, they say that iguanas only live to be six because folks don't know how to take care of them. So happy to say that we've beat that uh, peak for the typical average. Um, I'm hoping I can have her until she's about 15, but that does mean that she will uh, continue to grow. So um, really fortunate to have a great fiance who's such a good 
for be roaming uh be older uh hi Jennifer Franks good to see you and Elizabeth oh so many fun friends on right now it's good to hang out with you all this is so fun for me uh getting to talk about my favorite pet don't tell my cats um <laughs> so okay um as I mentioned her cage is behind me um, a lot of people are going to ask if she is free roaming. Uh, so I do put her in her cage uh, for certain parts of the day. They are supposed to have 12 hours of light and 12 hours uh, off. So I do try to get her in there. But um, uh, Al is eight years old, Karina. Um, so, um, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought here. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, can grow to five to seven feet long. Um, this is actually the fourth cage I've had for her because she has outgrown all of the other tanks that you can buy at typical stores, uh, terrariums, and things like that. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, this, funnily enough, is a ferret cage. Uh, I am a part of a lot of different uh, iguana groups online. Yes, there's a community of us. And I saw someone that used a ferret cage, and I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, fun thing about this is that in the summer, I can actually put it outside and it gets hot. Though usually I just let her hang out on my back porch and <laughs> she just sunbathes outside. Um, so with the ferret cage, it is made of metal. Uh, it is two stories. As you can see, I'm about five foot six, so it's probably um, just shy of five feet. Um, it has a hole in the center of the floor so she can move uh, up and down stories. Um, and actually there is like a removable pan at the bottom, which is where she uses uh, the restroom. So there are padded paper towels at the bottom that they change out every week. Uh, people don't really realize this, but iguanas are habitual animals and she is potty trained. So uh, she never had an accident um, outside of the cage. Uh, Jennifer Ziegler asked how old she was when I got her. I was six weeks old. So when I'm done with this video, I'll post, but she was about the size of my finger. Um, and so she uh, has grown quite a bit <laughs> since then. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, we'll see how much she continues to keep growing. So I'll talk a little bit more about her light setup and things like that here in a moment. Uh, but we're going to jump right into batch step one. Obviously, that step is to literally just observe a wild creature. And as you can see, she's super snuggly. I always joke that she's my little lizard cat. Uh, she loves cuddles. She loves having her head rubbed. As you can see, when I give her head rubbing, she'll just close her eyes and relax. Uh, she just loves to hang out. She's the best gal. Um, again, she was a wild animal when I got her. She didn't like being touched. We really had to work on this. Um, but super snuggly. She's domesticated. So if there are any girls walking, watching right now, Domesticated animal simply means um, that it, the animal was wild at one point and now it's tame. So she's tame, she's calm, um, she just loves hanging out. Um, uh, I'm seeing lots of questions. I'm going to try to do as many as I can. Yes, uh, we are. Gonna, I'll talk a little bit about, about her diet and you'll see what she eats. Um, someone asked how heavy she cut. To be honest, I don't know how much she weighs. I mean, probably like five or six pounds right now. Um, but again, if you've ever been on a cruise, I'm sure you've seen some of those giant tropical iguanas that um, weigh quite a bit. So, um, well, let's just get started. I'm gonna uh, stick her in her cage and hope that she eats for you all. And if not, I'll kind of start talking about some other things uh, and answering some of your questions. So uh, in terms of what does she eat, the main reason I wanted an iguana um, when I was younger um, is because they're vegetarian. I've always been an avid reptile lover. And when I was younger, I had um, a little uh, gecko and they eat crickets. And after a while that can just get um, kind of gross. So I knew I wanted something vegetarian. And as a 19 year old, a little naive, that was pretty much the only research I did without knowing again that they can grow to uh, be seven feet long and live to uh, be a really long um, old age. So. Uh, the main thing that attracted me to wanting an iguana was that I wouldn't defeat it bugs. Um, so she primarily eats a diet of different leafy greens, smaller greens, curly mustard greens, kale, um, all things like that. Uh, and then I sprinkle in different things for her throughout the week. So um, different vegetables. She loves carrots and zucchini and bell pepper. Um, and then she loves strawberries. So we always give her our strawberry tops and she usually <laughs> gives her face. She's also really, um, so many people enjoy to see you all. Was it hard, Al? 
Yeah, yeah. So that took quite a while. Um, I had her for about two years before I would say that she uh, was tame. So it took a really long time. And I talk a little bit more about that. But really, when you're acclimating an iguana to uh, getting to know you, it starts as simple as just like sticking your hand in the cage and leaving your hand in the cage for a little while until the animal gets used to your hand. And then slowly, you know, you can start to touch the animal. Um, and then eventually, you know, you can let the animal get in your hand. And then eventually you can take the animal out of the cage. So it took a long while, it took patience. I genuinely never knew um, that she would get to be so loving and affectionate that she is now. Uh, I really would never recommend to anyone to get a pet iguana. It takes a lot of time and patience uh, and really education. There was a lot that I had to learn. Um, and you know, how to go to an pet and things like that. Um, Amy, yeah, you are hilarious. Um, I'm gonna try to keep up with you. Um, when did I get her? I got her when I was 19 years old uh, in college. I went to Indiana University. So uh, as soon as I was out of the dorms, I was like, all right, it's lizard time. Uh, so I lived in with some friends in a house and I got her that summer on my 19th day. Um, okay, yeah, uh, great question, Amber. Um, hi, Gabby. So does she extra vitamins in her food? Yeah, so let's actually get to that. I know I'm. I'm lagging here on my time, but she does get a, a supplement. So one of the most common deficiencies um, with iguanas is a calcium deficiency. And I'll talk a little bit more about that with her lights. So she does get, and I'll show you here, um, a special oops, calcium uh, supplement in her food. Uh, so we'll go ahead and feed her. So today I have kale and carrots. Um, again, she can't be camera shy. So hopefully she does uh, eat for you guys. And if not, I'll, I'll keep answering your questions and, and talking here. But so part of this badge is to observe a wild animal. That's step one, which we've been doing. Uh, so if our, any girls are on, I definitely recommend that you write down at least three unique things that you notice about Al. Um, obviously, she hasn't done anything super exciting right now because she's kind of just chilling on me. Um, but that's part of the badge. So if you want to earn step one, um, either write three things down or, you know, if you're stuck at home with a caregiver um, or a sibling, maybe talk to that person about uh, something unique that you noticed about Al. So uh, today I have um, some kale and we'll try giving Al some kale. Um, a lot of people will like to ask if she'll eat out of my hand. She won't. She's a little bit of a diva. She doesn't want to do that. Um, <laughs> so we've got kale here. The big thing to note with kale is obviously to make sure it's clean. I've already pre-washed this. And then there are these big uh, stems in kale like this. Uh, she can't process this. Uh, iguanas don't really have teeth. They have like sharp ribbed gums. So uh, she wouldn't be able to break this down. So we have to make sure um, that we're not feeding her this. So I'll always pull these out. And then I'm gonna give her some carrots just for a fun little uh, extra something today in hopes that she'll eat for you guys. Uh, Natalie Fritz asked, what's her favorite food? It's definitely strawberries. A uh, girl goes nuts for some strawberries. She has a lot of fun with that. Um, so I'm gonna put some food. She does have, a again, iguanas are very habitual. So she goes to the bathroom in the same place. She's definitely an animal of routine. So I feed her every day in the same spot. She's got this shelf here. She knows that that's where she gets fed. Um, so I'm gonna put some food here and I'm gonna stick her in the cage and we'll see what she does for you guys. And then I'll, uh, check out your comment log and see uh, what she's doing. So I'm gonna give her, I usually give her two to three big handfuls of greens. Um, to be honest, I don't typically feed her every day because um, she kind of usually likes to eat every other day and kind of hang out outside of the cage. Um, so, but we'll see, I didn't feed her yesterday, so we'll see if she's hungry today. So usually again, two to three big handfuls of greens, that is the primary base for her diet. And then I've got these yummy shredded carrots that I'm gonna stick on top for a salad topper. She usually goes for the carrots too. Okay, and then we've got the calcium. Um, again, vitamin D3, very important. That helps uh, boost immune systems and also just make sure that she digests. Calcium keeps your bones strong. So that's why we like to give that to her. So um, it just looks like, um, I know you can't really see it with the greeny video, but it's just like a white powder. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little sprinkle of that on there for her, um, just as a little bonus supplement. Are you gonna eat for everyone? I hope you do. 
Okay, so let's give it a whirl. So as you can see, I've got these vines in here. She kind of usually likes to hammock out on those vines, and I will put the video closer. You're like, what is mommy eating? Oh yeah, she's eating. It's happening. All right, I know the video is a little grainy, but again, make some observations, see how she's eating. I always joke that she looks like Kermit the Frog uh, when she's eating. I wonder if it'll help if I turn this light off here. I don't know if that helped or made it worse. Oh, you can kind of see it. What do you guys think? Did the light help or not? Uh, does she act like she's in the wild? Um, you know, iguanas, <laughs> that's a fun, kind of a funny question. Um, iguanas have actually six different types of personalities. You can Google that. Um, so <laughs> she, um, so there are six different types of iguana personalities. She actually has the docile personality. So uh, in comparison to, you know, other lizards, I can't quite say what all lizards act like, but there are lizards that are more aggressive um, with iguanas, but she is very docile and loving. Um, Jill Taylor asked, how long does she hang on to you um, until she's sick of me? <laughs> She'll usually cuddle for a little while and then she wants to get up and explore. Uh, Derek asked, is she naughty or good all the time? Um, I would say she's good all the time. She's a really good girl. Um, I've never, ever been bit by her. Um, and the only time <laughs> she's had an accident with going to the bathroom was the very first time that she met my fiance and she literally went on him five years ago. Um, so that was really funny. <laughs> um, so, okay. Does she get any sugary treats? No, she, nothing inorganic. She only eats fruits and vegetables. So uh, strawberries are the primary uh, fruit that I give her. I've tried giving her apples and things like that before. I think it's a texture thing. She definitely prefers um, the strawberries. So where did Al come from? Uh, that is a great question. So I'm actually from Chicago, Illinois originally. And um, at the time, uh, there was a reptile shop called Serpent Safari at Gurney Mills. It's actually no longer open. Um, but it was a primary exotic pet shop. They had some really cool things there like banana boas and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, that's where I got her at the time. Yeah, age much. Um, yes, I would say she's out of her cage too much. <laughs> I spoil her. So, um, I try, so I usually leave this door open. Um, honestly, she typically likes to chill out on top of this UVB light because it's really warm and it warms her belly. And I'll speak to these lights a little bit more as you kind of watch her eat. Um, so... Her lights are on timer. As I mentioned earlier, uh, iguanas really are supposed to have 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Um, I will be transparent and say I don't necessarily stick to that because I, I'm, I know how to read her mood and um, she just really likes to be out of the cage. And so I'd rather give her less light if that means that she's going to be happier. Um, so... Uh, but typically, that's what they're supposed to get. So it, it is on a 12-hour timer. Uh, this big long light is a UVB light. Uh, so that um, is, um, allows for that um, development of that, um, cal uh, the D3 vitamin. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, so that, again, it stimulates natural behavior that typically the sun would do. Um, you know, even if you had an iguana by the window, uh, the rays, you know, you have to have a synthetic light uh, to pretty much get that. So uh, that stimulates um, like healthy digestion uh, and things like that. Um, then she has this heat lamp in the back. I'm going to leave it up by this because it's pretty hot. Um, this gets to be up to 100 degrees. Um, so the really important thing with iguanas um, is that you have the appropriate light set up. Her cage, I, we're actually in my bedroom right now because it's better lighting. I keep it in a different room upstairs. Um, but I wanted you all to be able to see her. So the really important thing is to have an appropriate le light setup, but also to give the iguana the ability to make choices on where it wants to go. 
Uh, so that's why um, it's really nice that she's got two stories. So she's got some mobility within the cage. Um, but you also want it to be um, uh, have opportunity to get away from the heat. So the iguana should be able to choose what wants to be warm and when it does not want to be warm. So the typical recommendation is to have one half of the cage heated and one half of the cage cooled. So if she does want to be cool, uh, there's a couple different places she can go. She can go down to the second floor, though I will say because that's where she goes to the bathroom, she typically does not like to hang out down there. Um, but she can also go, you can see this um, wooden half tube. Uh, and I know <laughs> she's a huge lizard. She actually can still fit underneath there. And so if she is trying to cool herself, she will go under there. And then when she wants to get warm, she'll go two places. She'll either go on the vines and hang right under the basking lamp, or she'll climb on top of the cage and lay on top of the UV light. As I mentioned, um, it's really warm. Um, so, oh gosh, so many questions coming in. I'm so excited to answer all of your questions. Okay, someone asked, um, how can you tell it's a girl because I took her to the vet? I genuinely did not know that she was a girl until I took her to the vet. Um, someone asked um, if she ever gets sick. So <laughs> me and Al have had quite the wild ride together. Um, she's been sick several times, knock on wood, not so much in the past couple of years. Um, but when I first got her, as I mentioned, a calcium deficiency uh, is the the biggest issue that can happen with iguanas at home. And, and when I got her and she was young, she did a really severe calcium deficiency because as I said, I was not educated and I didn't know how to take care of her. Um, and so she actually wound up getting a lot of broken bones because um, her body started to suck the calcium from her bones and pull it into her bloodstream. And so she had a lot of broken bones and I had to go to the vet. She actually had to have casts on all four limbs. It was really sad. Um, and my roommate and I at the time had to um, give her injections of calcium. Uh, so that was a really fun time in college. And Tessa Draper, shout out to you. You're the best roommate ever <laughs> and friend. Um, so she was really sick then. She's also really clumsy. She's got a little bit of a bird brain. I've had, she loves to climb. So she'll climb up on this cage. She loves to climb on our closet. Um, I've had her fall off of things. She fell off of something and broke her toe and had to have a toe amputated. Uh, so that was also very fun in life. Um, lastly, uh, in terms of just like times that she's been sick, um, as I mentioned, she was a female and I didn't realize that females, she had a different cage at the time, but um, females, whether or not, um, you know, will have eggs. And so at the time, um, I noticed her getting really lethargic and she actually started to turn orange. And I knew that something wasn't right because she wasn't acting like herself. And it turns out she actually uh, had eggs in her belly and she wasn't laying them because she did not feel uh, safe or comfortable to do so in whatever, for whatever reason that was. Um, and the eggs, because she was retaining them, were actually infecting her body. Um, and so believe it or not, I mean, I know people may think this is wild. She's like a cat to me. I mean, she's like a cat. She's like a dog. I've had her for so long that, um, I would do anything for her. Um, and so she had to have, um, you know, her ovaries removed and have those eggs removed. Um, and so she had a really, um, intense surgery. Um, and so, um, yeah, those are the times that she's been sick. And since then she has been very healthy. Uh, someone wanted me to get back badge so again the two steps of the badge that we're talking about today are steps one and two i will give you the tips so that you can complete three through five at home um and then i will try to get to some of the questions there's so many of them um no owl does not have any toys she is not easily amused she usually just likes to hang out and chill so again for step one it was to observe a wild animal which we are doing so um I hope that everyone has um, observed three unique things about Al. Uh, please comment some unique things that you've noticed. She is not warm blooded. She is cold blooded. So she only stays as warm as her environment. I've seen some questions about that. Um, so again, she th this will get as hot as 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then my home is usually heated to 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit uh, at night. Um, and so that was step one, was to observe a wild animal. Step two was to learn about the animal's living environment. Um, so while typically in the wild, an iguana would live 
uh, in a tree. So it would choose that tree and, and kind of make that its designated home uh, for its life. So typically a tropical tree, um, its skin um, is meant to absorb that heat. So often in the tropics, it will go onto a large stone and the stone will be heated by the sun. And so that's how it will get um, some of that. In terms of what stays clean, she does uh, shed her skin. Um, actually, I want to show you guys, I forgot to bring this in here with me. I will grab it. Okay, I meant to bring this in there with me. So Al actually shed this past week and that's how she stays clean. This is a chunk from her side. Um, so yep, this is um, part of her body and that's why she looks so beautiful and vibrant right now um, because she just shed her coat. I think she's realizing that she's on TV, uh, which is why she's bobbing her head is because she's getting a little territorial. <laughs> Sorry, Al, I know that everyone wants to hang out with you. Um, so in terms of the rest of the badge steps, um, I'll talk a little bit more about three, four, and five. And something else I wanted to mention, I know some people are asking like, where do these come from in the wild? Um, several different places. So Paraguay, Brazil, Puerto Rico, South America. Um, those are some places where you can find these in the wild. Um, so <laughs> got so many questions. Uh, what different colors can she be? She's a tropical iguana. Um, no, they're not like chameleons. They don't change colors depending on their environment, but her shades do change um, every time she sheds. So she, I'll pull her out so we can all can look at her again. She is primarily green. Um, she's got gray and then ribbons of brown on her. And when she molts, she actually turns like a light gray with that skin popping off. Um, yeah, so kind of going back to their natural environments, with tropical green iguanas because they typically live in trees and come down to heat themselves on stones. That says a lot about why they look the way they do. So if she was in a tree, you likely couldn't see her because the green and brown would be um, mixing in with the leaves. And then she actually has these really beautiful um, like jowls and jewel tones on her face. Yeah, say hi to everybody. <laughs> um, and so these would help her camouflage as well with stones, the big jewels on her face. Um, what does she feel like? She's very soft, she's smooth. Um, the jewels around her face and jowls are very smooth. Um, trying to see. How often you shed? Usually every full, um, um, a month or two. Um, so. Okay, going back to the other bad steps. So I know we, we have completed steps one and two today. Um, for steps three, four, and five, um, even with social distancing, these are super easy to complete during this time. So for step three would be to create your own animal house. So you could either draw a picture or use household supplies or build something in your backyard, uh, anything that suits your fancy. And then I encourage you to comment on this and show me what you make. Show me something that Al would love to live in, maybe build a tree out of Play-Doh uh, that she would love. Uh, for step four, um, explore endangered habitats. So what I recommend doing if you're a Girl Scout at home watching this would be to hop onto National Geographic Kids uh, and look at different things related to the Arctic Circle, the Gulf of Mexico, um, or the Amazon uh, rainforest to learn about uh, those different environments. And then for step five, which is my favorite step because as Girl Scouts, we're always looking forward to taking action in our communities. Step five is um, learning how to help protect different animal habitats. And so while many things are canceled, now due to um, the state of our nation, going outside is not canceled. So get permission from your local parks department and see what you can do to help conserve uh, those um, natural animal habitats for something local in your community. I would love to hear if anyone's got any ideas um, on what they can do to make a difference uh, with animals um, in Ohio or where you're from. I saw that we have people log in. Um, from all over. So uh, I'm trying to keep up with all your questions. Um, oh, someone here from Puerto Rico and she sees iguanas all the time. Uh, 
she actually loves people. Um, she's a little bit of a queen. She loves to be the center of attention. Um, so if you are interested in Al, I will try to answer as many questions as you can. Just comment and I'll get back to you when I hop off the line here. Um, I will be tuning back in tomorrow at 2 p.m. to work on the Brownie Pets badge. So you will get to see uh, Al again. I'll talk a little bit more about her day-to-day -day care routine. I'll also be showing you uh, how I take care of my two cats and pet goldfish. Uh, so we have a zoo in here. We have lots of fun. <laughs> um, and then today, this afternoon, uh, my colleague Tori Hauk, very similar to the Animal Habitats badge, is going to be working on the Primitive Camper badge. So while we've been talking about animal habitats for the iguana today, you can hop on this afternoon because I hear that Tori will um, be showing how to build a primitive shelter outside. Uh, so that is very cool. And if you had fun hanging out with me and Al today, uh, if you're not familiar, the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, one of the best places in the world, we heart you. Um, they at every day are doing 3 p.m. safaris. So I definitely recommend hopping on, watching one of those virtual safaris. Um, they're last. Um, I'll try and answer just some questions as I wrap up. I'll hang on for a few more minutes. Um, has Al ever hurt me with her claws? Uh, yeah, so she does have really sharp claws. I do have to cut her talons. Um, does she ever escape her cage? Yes, uh, there have been times I have closed the door and knocked it. It does have a latch, um, but I often don't do that because she hangs out outside of her cage so often. So there have been times that she has gone missing and we've had to look for her. The good thing is she is so big, <laughs> uh, so she is pretty easy to find. Honestly, her go-to hiding place is uh, in my closet. She loves to climb on sweaters and things like that, so I typically find her uh, in my clothes. Um, yes, she does blink. Um, what does she do when she gets scared? Honestly, she doesn't really get spooked. She is a very chill lizard. Um, I usually feed her every other day. Oh, hello from Pennsylvania, Jennifer. What up? Uh, make a birdhouse. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Um, What's the fifth step again? Okay, so I can go over this. I'll just repeat them again. Step three is to create your own animal house. Step four is to explore uh, endangered habitats. And step five is to help protect endangered habitats. Um, if you are interested in today, Girl Scouts of Western Ohio is going to be doing uh, digital uh, virtual badge engagements twice a day, every day, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, you can check Check out our schedule on the Girl Scout of Western Ohio public page. Uh, really excited about what's up and coming. Our team is working hard to um, help you guys have fun while you're at home and learn um, and show that it's easy to do Girl Scouts uh, with limited resources. So um, we're really excited about this cup. Uh, I clean each one. So, uh, no, she doesn't do any tricks. Uh, she get a long hat. Really, they're indifferent to each other. I think the cats are more interested in her is in them. No, I did not declutter. I just trim her claws. Um, what's the name of the site with the 3 p.m. animal safari? That's the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Go give them a follow on Facebook. They're awesome. Uh, Brianne, I'm so glad that Juan is giving them feel inside. Kate, yeah, she's good at climbing. I actually have a list in my backyard in the summer she'll climb on top of the trellis and just hang out there during the day uh no I'm a vegetarian only eat plants um yeah i can't have seen it they don't really interact too much um especially not out of the house uh I, I do her go outside of the house supervised definitely not unsupervised um you her food every time I feed her. Usually, honestly, just once. So she, she is a local green iguana. Um, hey, Derek, I hope you're hanging in there being at home for two weeks. Um, does she go together with animals? I would not put her with other animals. Um, I mean, apart from the cats, again, they don't really interact too much, but I wouldn't really put another in her cage. She might get territorial. Um, uh, hey, Pennsylvania Troop 2234, yes, 
I do let her out to explore in the house. She primarily hangs out on this upstairs floor. Uh, sometimes she'll, when I have friends over, I will bring her downstairs because everyone likes to hold her and hang out with her. And then in the summer, I will let her hang outside on my backyard. Uh, we've got that really nice trellis on that. Uh, thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm so happy you joined. Uh, yes, Natalie, um, I would love to get another exotic animal. I think my fiance would not be very happy about we already have a million animals at home. Uh, if I could get one more, I would love uh, a bearded dragon. They're super friendly, um, but again, they have to eat, you know, larvae and stuff like that. So that would certainly be a transition um, that I don't know if I'm ready to take on right yet. And we kind of have our hands full. Um, <laughs> she she also climb on my head, so she might try and do that in a minute. Um, for some people who maybe join later, how long do they live? In domestic care, they typically live to be six years because folks um, don't necessarily know how to take care of them. She is eight years old. Um, and in the wild, um, so if you do everything right in domestic care, they say they'll live, live to be up to 12 to 15. Um, and in the wild, they can be 25 to 30. Uh, she can be territorial, um, typically only when she's hungry. Okay, I have tried. Um, so I'm going to hop off here. Again, tune in today at 2 p.m. to hang out with Tori as we were in that primitive camper badge. This has been a lot of fun for me. I'm going to hop on after and answer a lot of your questions. Please comment below. Comment something that you learned. Uh, comment how you're going to finish the last three steps of the badge. We would love to see what you're doing. Uh, and comment what else you'd like to see from Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. We are here uh, to try and make this um uncharted territory um as fun as well for you all and educational so let us know what we can do and uh we're here to help so all right peace out girl scout